Today we're going to wrap up our discussion of acids and bases with just two applications of acid-base chemistry. The first is acid rain and the second is ocean acidification, which we've already talked about a little bit in class. So acid rain is the term that is given to rain that has a pH lower than 5. So remember, the lower the pH is, the more acidic it is. So um, 7 being neutral, so anything lower than 5 is considered acid rain. So rain is naturally slightly acidic, <clears throat> just because of the, um, the things that are floating around in our air that um, make the water slightly acidic when it comes out of the sky. Um, but that can be made worse by um, pollutants in our air. Um, so one of them is carbon dioxide, and then there are also um, contributions from sulfur dioxide, or SO2, and some from nitrous oxides as well. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the chemistry that um, is a factor there, but just know that that brown smog that you um, can see in cities, that is from nitrous oxides, and that can also contribute to acid rain. So there are two acids that form. The first is carbonic acid, and that happens when carbon dioxide combines with water and makes H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. And given the name, you would assume this is um, an, an acid, and so it's going to lower the pH of the water if it's formed. All right? And then the second is the formation of sulfuric acid, and that one is slightly different. Uh, first, the sulfur dioxide, which is a, a pollutant that comes out of cars and factories, um, combines with oxygen in the air to make SO3, or sulfur trioxide, and then the sulfur trioxide reacts with water to make H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. Okay. Um, one thing that's, that's sort of interesting is calcium carbonate um, is found in the ground. This is um, limestone, and this is found in the ground in some uh, freshwater um, bodies, some freshwater lakes and things like that, and that can actually help um, reverse the effects of acid rain. So how does that happen? It happens by um, combining, um, as we have in this figure here in the top part, um, the limestone, which is the calcium carbonate, combines with, with the H3O+, plus, which is what makes that water acidic, right? Um, and it makes water and carbon dioxide and just um, calcium ions floating around. And so if you have a lake or something that is lined with limestone, then it will naturally be able to resist the effects of acid rain, but it will do so by releasing carbon dioxide back out into the air. If you have um, something like the ocean or a lake that is lined with something like granite, which doesn't react, um, then the H3O plus just keeps building up, and this causes problems for ecosystems. So um, fish and crabs and um, all kinds of different sea animals, sea life, uh, is very tuned to a specific environment, and so when that shifts, even a few um, pH units, it can be deadly for them. And it, it, even if it only affects one thing in the ecosystem, um, the way ecosystems interact, as you learned in biology last year, if you um, mess with something low on the, the food chain, then things higher up are also affected. Even if the acid doesn't directly affect them, if their food source is impacted, then it's going to affect the entire ecosystem. All right, and now just a little bit of a review of ocean acidification, since we did talk about this in class already. Um, atmospheric CO2 has a large impact on um, our oceans, and that's because the um, ocean is normally slightly alkaline or slightly basic. Um, it's usually pH of a little more than 8. Um, and then as we add CO2 to our atmosphere, the ocean's um, are absorbing some of it. So the oceans absorb, absorb approximately a third of our CO2 emissions, which is a lot. Um, and that is good for reducing atmospheric CO2 and uh, reducing the effect of global warming, but unfortunately has a drastic effect on the oceans. So atmospheric CO2 impacts the pH of the ocean and also the mineral composition. Okay, so... Um, as more CO2 is absorbed into the water, the pH is going to do go down because it's becoming more acidic uh, using the um, equation we looked at just a moment ago in this video. And um, because it will um, react with carbonate that's already in the water, so this is the same kind of carbonate that you could find in limestone, and it helps reduce the um, impact on the pH, 
but the result is that you get these deposits of um, calcium carbonate on the ocean floor, and that means that that carbonate is no longer available to um, marine life that needs it to form things like shells. So the um, the impact of carbon dioxide being absorbed into our oceans is twofold. Um, it changes the pH and it also changes um, the availability of minerals that many um, different marine organisms need to survive. Okay, And it's important to note, so I know I often hear um, people make claims about rises and falls naturally in um, the atmospheric CO2 or in the change in the pH of the ocean. And it is true that the pH of the ocean does shift with time. The last shift occurred about 56 million years ago, and um, the total decrease over a period of 5,000 years was just under a half a pH unit. All right, and so that's a pretty small change each um, each year. It it's only amounts to 0.1 units per year, but it even that had a drastic effect on marine life. All right, so that wraps up our. Um, a discussion of ocean acidification and acid rain, and it wraps up our discussion of pH and acids and bases.